James, is that the new Kimber in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? Yes. start this video, let me get something off my chest. Today it is August 9 and I'm recording this video. I can't release the video today because I'm under an NDA or as they call it in the gun industry, an embargo because it sounds cooler than non-disclosure agreement. Even though I can't release this video until later this month, a couple nights ago I get an email from a dealer asking me about this gun, the Mako, because Kimber put the R7 in its catalogs that dealers started receiving last week. To make embargoes worse, PR departments will often send review guns to every gun tuber who has any subscribers outside of their immediate family, and one or two things happen. One, which has already happened this week, is that some Yahoo will see the gun leaked and he'll pop his video off before everyone else thinking it's okay. And then it turns into the YouTube equivalent of a bread riot, except more pathetic with this channel saying, well, this channel released a video, so I'm gonna release mine. And everyone starts publishing their videos. Now, the second thing that happens or that's going to happen is that because I don't know how many copies Kimber sent off, I don't know how many YouTubers are dropping their videos at the exact same second as this one. Everyone assumes that if all these videos all drop at the exact same time, we all got paid to publish them. Now, I bet some of these channels did, but you can bet your beautiful TFB TV viewer ass, not me. I'm 90 bucks in the hole plus 200 bucks in ammo because TFB got one copy of this gun. I next day aired it to Nick Chen so he can cover it for the firearm blog. Now, the good news is I know my micro compacts. So you're gonna get some info today that you won't get anywhere else with this video. Plus, I'm easy on the eyes. No offense to my other gun tuber bros out there. Conclusion, most embargoes are dumb. I'm not saying Kimber or any other manufacturer is doing anything wrong per se because that's just the way it works in the industry. I'm just bitching because this is what happens every time. Now run that Glock commercial or something. The new Kimber R7 is a micro compact, meaning a gun that is, by my definition, roughly four inches tall, one inch thick or less, and holding more than 10 rounds total capacity with a flush fit magazine. I would normally spare you my usual chronological rendition of how micro compacts evolved from the Kel-Tec P11 in 1995 to what they are today, mainly because of the commercial success of the Sig P365 in 2018. But I think it's important to go over this history in every micro compact compact video. So this time I'm going to do it as a series of limericks, you know, change shit up a bit. The kel P11 was the OG micro compact, just one inch thick, but still double stacked. And although it was first, some said it's the worst because its trigger is hard to contract. The P365 came next and many say that this one's the best. Yeah, some firing pins broke, which gave Mac a stroke, but ever since these guns printed checks. Smith's Shield Plus and the Ruger Max 9 were introduced at the same time, and they're hoping that, after the Hellcat, SIG only sues the feline. The point is, there have been a lot of micro-compacts since 2018, and to me, it's pretty clear that it was the success of the SIG P365 that brought about this micro-compact revolution. And I think I speak for all of us when I say that I am so sick and f***ing tired of how awesome it is that it seems like there's a new one being cranked out every other week now. I mean, God, it's great. And now Kimber's in on it. You can get a bunch of options from a bunch of different manufacturers. And I've told you before, there's still at least two more that I know of on the way from big companies. They're set to drop and I am really stoked about them. So if you don't like this one or if you don't like that one for whatever reason, just get something else. 
the more the better, in my opinion. No, not you. Today we're talking about Kimber's first foray into the true double stack micro compact genre. Thank God this thing isn't a 1911 because the most important thing about a carry gun is reliability and all of that actual shooting can be a little bit too much to handle for the 1911. I've also got to hand it to Kimber. They must believe in this gun to send it to me because if you remember, I'm the guy who did a video called The Kimber Solo Sucks. That was Kimber's first attempt at a striker fired compact handgun and it was abysmal. So I'm not gonna lie to you, when I opened up the box for the Mako, I thought for sure that this thing was gonna break out. I found it aesthetically underwhelming. Coincidentally, that's the phrase my wife uses to describe our first date, but yeah, it's kind of ugly. And the boys at Gretna Gunworks, where I picked it up, they thought the exact same thing too. I know this is where I get jumped on in the comments for being a Glock fanboy and that they're the ugliest guns of all time, blah, 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 point taken, guys. But that should tell you that I really don't care about how a gun looks, I just care about how it works. So we're gonna chat about that right after we get through the specs because the looks relate to some interesting features in this gun. The Kimber R7 Mako is a 9mm micro compact polymer frame striker fired semi-automatic handgun with an 11 round capacity with a kind of flush fit magazine. That's to say the 11 round magazine does have a slight protrusion. It also comes with a 13 round magazine that has a little pinky extension, real easy to shoot. Capacity wise, you're looking at the same as the Hellcat. It has an overall height of 4.3 inches, a weight of 19.5 ounces without the optic or magazine, and a length of 6.2 inches with a 3.4 inch long barrel. The slide and barrel are nitrocarburized stainless steel, so they should prove to be extremely corrosion resistant, and it has front and rear slide serrations that work well. I have to mention that I think the R7 is, for some reason, very easy to charge or to rack the slide. This is a big deal because for those of us with delicate statures like women, the elderly, and people who watch anime, sometimes have a hard time charging micro-compact handguns. But the Kimber is relatively easy, and that's probably on account of this wonky locking system that it uses. It uses this chunky lug on top of the chamber and a groove in the slide to kind of keep the barrel locked in the slide until slight rearward travel unlocks the action. If that didn't make sense to you, that's okay. Just know that a few of your fellow viewers were probably wondering. The sights are great. Three dot True Glow Tritium Pro night sights using an orange front and white rear dots. Very high vis, easy to pick up. One of the nice things about the Mako is it comes from the factory with an optics cut and night sights. As someone who is a staunch adversary of the red dot sight on a carry pistol, training with a few professional instructors using red dots over the past year or so has completely changed my opinion on it. It doesn't take a lot of time with them to become much more precise, much more proficient, and just as fast as you would be with your irons. So I'm glad to see guns like the Ruger Max 9 and the Mako coming straight from the factory with optics cuts, as well as night sights, which are a must-have for a carry gun. They don't offer a non-optics cut version like the SIG P365 or the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, which means more machine work, which means more expense. But it seems to me that the upcharge for an optics cut is minimal and it's likely worth the layout, especially if you change your mind a few months down the road and you decide that you actually do want one. At that point, you have to send it to some hack meth head who's gonna charge you 150 bucks to rape your slide with a Dremel. What I'm trying to say is yes, Kimber is forcing an optics ready gun on you, but it's also for your own damn good. So quit your whining or you won't get any dessert. The R7 comes ready with a shield RMSC cut mounting pattern, which is now the de facto standard for micro compacts at this point. You have your option of getting the Crimson Trace 1500 as a package deal from the factory. The standard optics ready model has a 599 MSRP, the same as a SIG P365. Now this is pretty smart because you probably want to price match the market leader while offering more options like for example the optics cut. Now you can also buy the R7 with an optic installed, but it's a little confusing to me, so let me explain. The red dot package deal comes with the Crimson Trace 1500 installed. Side note, mine was not perfectly zeroed, although it was close, so make sure you cross check that whenever you get it. The real problem is I don't know what the hell a CT1500 is. I can find the 1550 on Crimson Trace's website and it looks similar. I would think 1500 would be a typo, but everything I've received from Kimber refers to a 1500. Also, Sky packages one of their guns 
with a CT, and you guessed it, it's the 1500. I'm just going to assume that the 1500 is like a designation for the 1550 in a package deal. It feels pretty tough for a polymer optic, and it worked well enough, but it does have some shortcomings. First, the battery is mounted on the bottom, which means you have to remove the optic to change it. To me, not a huge deal, especially if there's enough battery life, and CT claims a 20,000 hour runtime, or over two years, not bad. Just change it every birthday or something and re-zero it. Now, weirdly, according to the materials I received from Kimber, they claim a five to 600 hour runtime, which means it might run out of battery while sitting at the bottom of my trash can waiting for the city sanitation truck. I would bet, nay, hope, that Kimber's number is wrong, that it's a typo, like five to 600 hours, and CT's is correct. But I have to mention it just because there's this inconsistency between the materials I received from Kimber and what I've seen from CT. Kimber also has the package MSRP'd at $799. That's an additional $200 MSRP for an optic that street price is less than $150. Bucks. Finally, according to this reviewer on Amazon.com, only use the CT1550 if you are prepared to literally die. The CT doesn't have an on-off switch, and according to CT, it will turn off in complete darkness. Well, that sucks. I mean, hopefully the shake awake works the one time you actually have to pop somebody in the tremors of fear that sees your hands when you realize your carry gun optic is turned off will be sufficient to wake the CT up. So I'd say the optic is okay, and because Kimber isn't really giving you like a, a price break on it, you may as well, I guess, skip the CT model and just get the standard R7 in my opinion. Another cool thing, Kimber's going to have holsters already available at launch. We tried one out from Mission First Tactical and it was okay, didn't knock my socks off or anything, but it was good. It's an inside the waistband holster, plain Kydex, plain plastic belt clip. For 50 bucks, a little pricey for being just a plain old holster. But the important thing is that it's available and the mission first will do the trick until more options become available. Who knows, you might even like it more than I did. Another interesting thing about the Mako is that it uses a serialized fire control group rather than a serialized frame, just like the 365. This means there's a good chance that Kimber or third parties could produce different styled frames, different calibers, and you can freely interchange this serialized trigger group between those frames without needing to legally purchase a new gun. Really love to see this trend. I'm willing to look past the looks of the Kimber R7 because this gun has some excellent features. The grip texturing is near perfect and the ergos are very good. I really like the texturing forward of the trigger guard below the slide acting like a speed ledge of sorts or a Springfield might call it like a bonus grip zone for your support hand. The mag release is flush with the frame. This is freaking brilliant. Kimber made this little divot in the frame and the magazine release button is inside that divot. This is very well thought out and it prevents you from accidentally hitting the mag release if you sit or you lean on your concealed handgun at like a weird angle or if you just set it down aggressively the wrong way. Now, some of you may be wondering why Kimber went with a right hand only ejection port. Look how tiny that thing is versus like an open top or open top and side design used by every other micro compact. The answer is that Kimber believes this closed top design mitigates external dirt intrusion and it shields optics from venting gases and brass, protecting the optic from heat, dirt, and impact. This is all without compromising reliability, according to Kimber. One note, however, if you're a lefty, beware, as Sam here demonstrates, if you shoot with your left hand and your right support hand covers the ejection port. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the brass has nowhere to go, but right back into the slide and it tends to turn your autoloader into a bolt action. I would say the crowning achievement of the R7 is its trigger. It's a good trigger for any gun by any measure, and everyone who shot it at the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center, including myself and Ryan, concluded that it's probably the best trigger out of all the micro compacts in the market right now. And that's saying a lot, considering that a bunch of them are good, especially the P365, the new Hellcat, the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, they all have really good triggers right out of the box. And the trigger is aluminum, not plastic. It has a break that's cleaner and it's a little more crisp, like a fresh Coors Light. Here we go, first shots with the Kimber R7, seven yards. Let's see how we do.
Okay. I mean, not bad for kind of the first group out of there. It's 11 rounds. So that's probably me pushing a little bit, but low to the left at seven yards. But I mean, you've got this batch here basically all touching and you've got three in the 10 ring. First magazine, that was the 11 round flush fit magazine. Now we've got the 13 round extended, same distance, seven yards. Here we go. Jeez, H. So, holy moly, a couple of flyers, but that's 11 rounds. <laughs> holy shit. I don't know what I did here, but I'm, my God, that's 11 rounds all in the 10 ring, all touching at seven yards. Touching, feeling. Third time's a charm. We've got third magazine, 13 round, extended, seven yards. Here we go. Well, didn't have 13 rounds in there, but now let's have a look at this third target. And yeah, here we go. I'm starting to see a pattern here. A little to the left, but I mean, I, I can't be upset at that. It, 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 once again, they're all touching. I think this gun might be able to shoot. Kimber says this is a five to six and a half pound trigger from the factory, but I measured it and it's just barely under four pounds. I think that that's probably the magic number if you're carrying with a holster. I mean, hell, I think a light trigger with a loaded gun and no holster is really not that bad either because it increases the probability of teaching you a valuable lesson about not carrying with a holster. Is the Kimber R7 a good gun? I'd say F yes it is, even if it's ugly as hell. Accurate, great ergos, plus one of the best triggers out of the box for any defensive handgun. Well-designed night sights, optics ready, 599 MSRP, but should you buy it? That's a tougher question because then you have to consider its competition, and this is a stacked field. It's highly competitive, each micro compact being excellent in its own way. No, not you! God damn it, Taurus! Stop it! The R7 might be the biggest of the micro compacts and probably represents the outer limits of what could still be considered a micro compact and not a subcompact. With no magazine, it weighs 20.5 ounces with the optic, 19.5 without. To contextualize that, the heaviest micro compact until today was the Shield Plus, and that's 18.2 ounces without a mag. The P365 is just 16.6 ounces, and a Glock 26 is almost the exact same weight as the R7. My Gucci Glock 26 is 19.8 ounces. If you want your mind blown today, the discontinued kel P11 is only 14.4 ounces empty, over a quarter pound lighter than the R7, even if it has the worst trigger ever made for any pistol. The R7 might give you one more round than the P365, but it almost dwarves the much smaller SIG. The Shield Plus, which was again the biggest micro compact until today, is 0.96 inches at its widest point, while the R7 is 1.03 inches thick, the same as the P11. So the bottom line is that the R7 is the biggest micro compact we've seen so far, barely smaller than a Glock 26. Although it offers a standard 11 round flush fit capacity instead of 10 like the 26 or most every other micro compact that isn't the Hellcat. It also has no Picatinny rail, while some other micros do. It also has an outstanding trigger, a serialized fire control group, great ergos, texturing, factory night sights, factory optics cut, the smart flush ambi mag release feature, and it's easy to charge. Myself, personally, I place a much greater emphasis on having a smaller and lighter handgun, so I'd probably sacrifice the one extra round and the marvelous trigger for an easier to carry pistol with a still great trigger like the P365 or even the Shield Plus. But then again, neither of those models come optics ready from the factory at the base model, like the Kimber and the Shield doesn't include night sights as standard either. So in a way, the R7 is the same so far in that it's different, like every other micro compact. Each has their own pluses and minuses, and I think that when every variable is accounted for, concealed carriers could be just as happy with the R7 as anything else. This is such a tight, competitive market that you really have to do your homework. Look at the pros and cons before you take the plunge on a micro compact nine. Or hell, 
you could just guess and probably be pretty happy because they're all good. Even you, Taurus. Guys, thanks a ton as usual for watching. Thank you to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Most of all, thank you to our Patreon and Subscribe Star supporters. Because we don't take money for reviews like this, we rely on you guys. We need you guys to support us. Patreon, Subscribe Star. But there's still some really sweet swag that we give out, patches. We do a gun giveaway, give away four guns every month. We give away four $100 blue alpha gift certificates every month so do us a favor support us if you can a dollar a month even would be fantastic but we're just glad you're watching take care